Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the latest edition of the Jake's Take with Jacob Elisher podcast. I'm your host, Jacob Elisher, chief content producer and writer of jakesake.com, a pop culture entertainment news website. Before we get started, if you're watching us today, please give us a thumbs up and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. And if you're listening to this through our audio, on our audio, please give us a five star rating and please give us a subscribe to the podcast. I am thrilled because I've been waiting to bring this guest on since the moment I met him at Planet Comic Con 2023. He is the right, he is, we have lightning bottle chemistry when we were talking back and forth about comics and also life in Kansas City. So please help me welcome one of the creators of the rise, most, one of the rising important comic book news brands, Blake Buzz, Blake Morgan to the podcast. What's up, Jacob? Thank you so much, man. Appreciate that, that intro. Thank you. You're so welcome. And guys, I must apologize. I have a bad voice, but however, the show must go on. So thank you, everybody, for dealing with this. No, I mean, you sound, you sound fine. No, don't worry about it. It's, it's in your head. It's, it always sounds worse in your head than it does on the mic, I guarantee it. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. So when did you get interested in comics, Blake? And how did that passion involve and desire to pursue a career in the comics and geek culture? Well, I mean, I, I grew up with comic books. I had a, uh, my dad would take me to comic book shops as a kid. Uh, he, my dad was also the janitor at my, at my school. We, he put my sister and I through private school. And so he worked there to make tuition easier. And I mean, I, I still remember being in second grade and, and he showed up with the death of Superman trade paperback and gave it to me out at recess. And I was like, I was like the nerd king of the world that day. Like everybody wanted to, every, we were all like crowded around in a circle, reading this book together. People would tell me when to turn the pages. Um, and so my dad was always very supportive of, of my be, me being a nerd. I also found out later him and my mom used to fight a lot when I was a kid. Uh, and, and so when they would get into fights, he would take me to a comic book shop and it, both as a way to kind of get me out of the house. But uh, I think, I think he was kind of playing a, a favorite game there later, but you know, anyways, but regardless, uh, you know, um, fam, all family still tight family stayed together. Everybody's everybody loves each other, but yeah, I was raised, I was raised to be a nerd, um, fell out a little around college when it wasn't like the cool thing to be. And I was partying a little too hard sometimes, but, uh, but I got back into it and, I, actually getting back into comics actually was really good for my health because i was i was being a bouncer at a bar i was doing some stupid stuff and i had to have a uh you know conversation with myself because it was like uh well you don't make enough money to waste it on bad stuff and comic books and so i started getting back into comics getting back into collecting and and making less bad decisions right so they kind of got me out of a rough spot and then and then yeah and then quarantine happened and we kind of some friends and I started talking through zoom, uh, just to, just to talk. And then someone got the bright idea to record it. And then, um, I found out that their podcast drama is a real thing. Uh, some people, uh, don't like to hear other people's ideas. And after some, some drama and falling out with some people, I, I kind of, I interviewed David Popose. This is a very long answer. I'm sorry. This is, uh, I interviewed this creator, David Popose, and he talked to me about writing and got me excited to write again. Uh, cause I, I dropped out of grad school and, uh, didn't, didn't write for a really long time. And so I was interviewing David Popose and he kind of put this spark in me and I started writing comic book reviews. I launched Blake's buzz, the blog. And then that happened in March, two years ago, 2021 in March. And then by July, I was doing the podcast. And then a few months later, I kind of switched to live streaming and that's 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 it man i just uh i you know i had a very supportive family and uh and they you know as long as i was reading they were happy um and then uh and then i you know i, I met some cool comic book creators that kind of pushed me in the in the right direction and here we are and it's incredible and it's an incredible story to be Thank you. And, Thank you. and also i gotta say comics are i gotta say I was part of the comic book things from by the time I was a freshman and by the time I was like a, a kid, a little kid going over to pop culture comics and then the lead comics and 1 million comics. Boy, that was the boy were those <laughs> days. And then I still had um, going over when I was in Boulder, I still use comics as the way to escape. So I was at the time of when Bright Jeff Johns was the king of DC at the time. 
mm -hmm. and released all those incredible blockbuster storylines that are now being played out on Max and on, on TV and film. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy how how they've uh, they've gone from you know these these little books with silly books we used to read and pick up at Seven Eleven sometimes to these like billion dollar you know, organizations and then Disney's doing all this stuff and DC's doing all this stuff and Michael Keaton's back. And, you know, it's, uh, I love it. Right. I, I think it's good, um, to, you know, even if people don't read comics, you know, like to get them to experience part of that world that we love so much, you know, it's, uh, I, I like that it's becoming more, more widespread. And I, I hope eventually that that correlates into sales because it does need it. And, you know, local comic book shops need, you know, they, they need people to come in and spend money. And, you know, I'm hoping that that kind of starts to balance out uh, more. But like I said, even it's it's just cool to see. It's it's cool to see the whole world celebrate this little corner of culture that we've all loved for decades. Right now, everybody's experiencing it. It's a cool feeling. And it's an amazing feeling as well. Who knew that picking up Batman and Robin Adventures would lead into something? right yeah yeah or reading uh reading spider-man dude i still remember I, for christmas one year i got a comic book collecting uh pack from my aunt and it came with a short box and some single issues and some some bags and boards and uh she got uh, one of those mail-in subscriptions to the amazing spider-man that you could like cut the page out in the marvel comic and, and and mail it in like with a stamp like that no one uses anymore uh and and so i used to get for a year I used to get Spider-Man monthly, like mailed to me, and it, dude, Mar they would fold these comics. They would like fold them in envelopes, and, like, no care given at all to like shipping. It's so funny how the industry has changed, and like we have these like cardboard mailers and plastic top loaders, and I every everything's like has to show up pristine, or people freak out. And I I still like from Marvel directly. They used to just fold these things in a yellow envelope and mail them out to subscribers, and no one cared. It's funny how things change. It is. I think several rating companies would have had a heart attack. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. righty. So let's talk about, um, I know that you, so this Blake's buzz, I got to say, what has been the growth of Greg? Because I'm proud of all the growth that you've done. And I think you, can you share that growth with me? With, and for those of my listeners and watchers who are unfamiliar with your work, that growth because you've grown leaps and bounds since we last spoke when we first met in back March of 2023. Yeah, yeah. Um, also, so so ran. I'm so glad we ran into each other at, at the con. Like we both, we both showed up early and we're and we're like first in line waiting to get in on on Sunday. And and we just start we just started nerded out and, and chatting until they they let us in. I had a great time meeting Jacob. Uh, but yeah, it's um, Blake's it it uh, I got lucky because I'm a, I'm good on a mic. So a lot of creators like to talk to me. Um, and so it's a lot of times I don't, I don't ever have to, to fight for guests. I, I have to fight to make time in the schedule. Usually, um, you know, I got, um, uh, you know, other than getting lucky, I just, uh, I'm good. I'm, I'm good at social media. Well, I'm good at Twitter. I'm getting better at other social medias, especially now with everything so weird with Twitter and X and whatever you want to call it. Like, um, but you know, a lot of my audience building happened organically. It happened naturally. Uh, when I, I, I the comic book reviews, people, I, I, people like reading my comic book reviews, uh, this for the same reason that they like listening to my interviews. They're not, um, they, they're more conversational. Uh, you know, I, I make jokes. I make, I get, I get, it gets weird sometimes. Sometimes we have drinks, right. And it's, uh, it, it's, it's not as formal as a interview or formal as a comic book review. Uh, so people like reading them and experience them that helped the growth initially. Um, other than, you know, just getting in, getting in touch with, with cool creatives that would retweet me, share my stuff, you know, tell their followers that like, you know, this guy can write and he's writing good comic book reviews and stuff. Uh, press list that took a chance on me. Uh, you know, I know there's some drama going around at aftershock comics these days. Uh, I think they're getting better though, but, you know, Aftershock was one of the first people to put me on a press list. Image Comics followed suit, put me on a press list. Now I'm on, I'm, on, I'm, on, I'm almost on everybody's press list. I get, I get so many comics a week. I don't have time to read them all. And I'm, I'm very lucky in that regard. But yeah, so press outlets and comic professionals and, and just people willing to take a chance on me and give me time uh, really helped me grow. And just, I was on I was, I was on, I was, I was in the comic book social sphere for, for many years before I ever did 
any of this any of this platform stuff i you know, it all started real i've kind of forgot to include this in my origin story it started with i used to do one one tweet reviews on twitter uh and i would i would read comic books try and tag everybody involved and fit a tiny review like in whatever characters i had left and it was kind of a challenge right to, to with the, the limited word count uh and but that i started finding other nerds on twitter to talk to and and people to like you know, would refer me books and I would refer them books. And, you know, we, we, we started talking because my friends and family are very supportive, but I don't have a lot of people in, in real life around me that read comics. So social media has been a huge blessing in that regard to get to connect with like so many fans uh, and other readers and, and, you know, fans of the medium and, you know, get to get to talk and, and, you know, ch uh, chat rooms and, and discords and stuff. Uh, so, you know, I was, I was doing all that before I ever launched Blake's buzz. So I had the start of a following the, you know, the spark that led to the wildfire, you know, people started to know who I was. So when I did launch the blog, when I did write my first full review, people were like, Oh, I've heard of this guy. When I did my podcast, people were like, Oh, I've heard of this guy. Uh, when I started selling t-shirts, right. Same deal. Love more, hate less, read comics. People had heard that I, I sold a bunch of t-shirts. It was very cool. When I started doing the live streams, people started tuning in. So, yeah, it's just it, nothing happens overnight. Like it, it sometimes you look at people's success and you, and you're like, how, it happened so quickly for them. Like, how do I do that? Well, like you know, people see that sometimes with me because when I was in the public eye, I did grow, um, you know, a lot. People that knew me before then, though, you know, for years I was just this dude on Twitter with a couple hundred followers tweeting out reviews of comics right uh and, and just talk, talking about new stuff i read week to week and and just trying to interact with people so you know it it's it, nothing nothing happens overnight and and if you if you really love it and you stick with it and you put the work in you know hopefully things start to turn for the better um there's always going to be some some blockades and hurdles and things like that right but when you love what we do when you when you love doing these interviews, when you love doing podcasts, when you love putting the work in, it just it kind of irons itself out. But you you, you got to love it. You really do because it it's a lot of work. Uh, you know, Jacob, it's a, it's a, you you put you put a lot of time in finding guests, scheduling these things. Take you, you, we're both it's a holiday, right? And we're both you you were so kind to do this interview. I di I didn't even remember it was the holiday. I was just so stoked someone wanted to interview me. I was like I, I was like yeah, let's go, baby, and. Uh, and then I, today I was like, oh, it's Labor Day. But no, you know, it's I'm just saying like uh, when you love it and you and you put the time in, you know, good things can happen. Hard work, hard work does pay off. Absolutely, it does. And also we're all on our individual journeys. For example, there are my peers that are really rapid and rapid growing. And it's like it's we have our, like, well, our time will come. Remember when I, I have to tell myself, you want to be like Regis, you want to be like Barbara Walters. They were in their 80s when they wrapped up their career. Mm -hmm. You want to be remembered for a legacy, yeah. not just for being a flash in a pan. And I think a lot of people, I'm not going to say names, but I think one of the initials, and I think one of the infamous people, PH, got ratified by, was like, took, was like the stars were in their eyes. And then all of a sudden they crashed down and we barely hear from them. Yeah. Yeah, some, some, sometimes when things happen too fast, it can be a bad, right? It's like, we, we, we ideally, you want to take those shortcuts, you know? Um, I work at Metal Ninja Studios. I'm the marketing manager. One of my new ventures in the comic book journey, like how comic books have become the day job, right? Um, so I work at Metal Ninja Studios as the marketing manager. My boss, Joel Rodriguez, started this from nothing. He used to work at Scout Comics and he's a, he lettered a bunch of comics and then he hired these teams and designers and, now he's got these these big plans and we got some big plans too for metal ninja and blake's buzz like i can't really say anything yet but like in the coming months they've already they, they've sponsored the podcast and we're gonna do like basically we're gonna use my youtube platform as a means to do like round tables creator round tables and stuff that we're doing at the company um we're just kind of inc gonna incorporate that into the channel that's one thing we got some other stuff coming too but what my boss joel says he's very He's, he's very health centric, uh, similar to you. I mean, I, I see you posting your workout vids and, and pics and stuff. Right. And he's, 
he does like a lot of crazy challenges and and like the the mud running challenges and stuff and he's just like he's he's ripped and he's healthy and and nerds out and all this stuff but his big deal is is one percent daily right if you can better yourself one percent every day and take those baby steps towards your goal that's better than than you know leaping over buildings and getting there fast right it's it's um there's not a time limit on these things like you mentioned previously about like wanting to make it and some of these other some of these other creatives that like you know got big you know well into their careers and 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 older ages right you know that used to be a big fear of everybody is like oh if i don't do this before i'm 30 it's never going to happen well you know i didn't start any of this stuff till you know till you know going mid 30s and and it and it keeps changing it keeps changing it keeps getting better so um you know don't let don't let your age get in the way don't let um the, you know the different paths that people take it's it's so easy to get discouraged by that to look at other channels to look at other outlets and we've got why don't i get those kind of views why don't you know why don't why don't my posts get that many likes and retweets? Why didn't, why did this guest say no to me, but went on another podcast? It's so easy to like fall down these rabbit holes and I do it right. So like, I'm, I'm trying to, I need to take my own advice here, but like, keep your eyes forward, keep your attitude positive. That's the big deal guys. If anyone who's trying to do a podcast, that's trying to be a content creator, or if you're just trying to do something like keep, your attitude positive. There is a place for, for quick clicks and, and clickbait for people, for, for, for the hot take addicts and, and people with attitudes. And you know, there's, there's an audience for that. It's not long lasting. And, and when you need it, when you need people to have your back, that's not the audience that's going to have your back. You stay positive and you put that positivity into the world. You're going to get it back maybe slowly. Right. But you will get it back and you'll meet better people that will lift you up and support you. And that's when you're a content creator, when you're doing this stuff solo, you need people around you that will lift you up, that will support you, that will push you, that will say, hey, if you, if you want to quit, I understand mental health is important, but people are going to miss you. And when, because I, there was been, there's been a couple of times where I didn't want to do this anymore. Or I thought I didn't, I changed my mind quickly. But when, when you have those people in your corner, like rooting for you, changes the game. It's wildly different. And, and I'm not talking about like your family and stuff. Like you need real friends and real family that, and they should support you, right? Ideally, in the ideal world, if we're all lucky. But I'm talking about like people you never met. My buddy Ronan from Australia, uh, we send memes and, and gifts and, and short videos back and forth, like through Instagram and stuff. And we talk a lot, right? And and if, if he sees me post something weird, he hits me up and he, you okay, man? Like that's, that's what makes me go forward and keep pushing it is meeting amazing people like that, making real friendships, even though I've never met these people in real life, right? They live across the world. Uh, and that's, you know, that's the difference between coming in with a positive attitude and, um, and, and, and just, and pushing that and trying to put that image out in the world other than like you know what what's going to get me from point a to point b the fastest and do i have to sacrifice some of my morals to get there if that's you like okay like i know some people do it but there are long lasting effects from the the slow positive approach that i can attest to and i feel like jacob is the same because he is a very very kind soul and has been doing this for a while. So I, I feel like, I feel like Jacob, and he's been nodding while I've been talking. So I feel like Jacob may, may agree with me on some of these, but that's just, you know, being positive, be a good person. It's, it's not hard. It's, it's just oh, do it. <laughs> oh, believe me, Blake, there have been times that I would say, uh, should I say this? Or like, what is the repercussions of this? And then not to mention, I got to think of my real life friends and family as well. Like, or my niece and nephew going to be like side eyed at me when they are 10 11 they see <laughs> your uncle jacob being like that if he was like that but at the same time we all are on each like i said before we're all out on each other's journeys mm -hmm. and i'm very grateful that i built some friendships authentic friendships from doing the podcast and like 
I'm great. Like, as I told everyone, the little plug, just let everyone know, September 23rd, I'm inviting three of those amazing people that I met on my journey, Drew Angelman, Dylan Deckard, and Paige, and most likely to in TikTok. And we're doing a live podcast on September 23rd. So I'm very, and this is, and I've known Drew for since 2020. So three years is a long time. Yeah. That's so cool, man. That's so cool. All right. So let's get back to, I want to focus on you because you are here. (laughs) Okay. They're coming on September 25th. I'm you I'm still thrown off. I usually do the interviews, right? So like I <laughs> in my mind I keep saying like we got to get Jacob into this conversation. I'm not I'm not used to being on the other side of the podcast. It's so cool. All right. So I want to talk about the incredible opportunities that you've had to sit down and guys just like you know Blake has sat down with some incredible recognizable creators, some very, very well-known ones. So I picked a couple of them because we don't want to have time to go through everybody, <laughs> but the ones that gravitate to me the most. So we got to start with David Mack. So he's in, very famous for his role as the interior artwork for Daredevil, not to mention one of the cover artists of Justice League America number two, one of my favorite series, and not to mention Alias for Jessica Jones. That was mm-hmm. Jessica Jones' first solo contract. So David Mack is somebody that rarely speaks to comic book media. So you were very lucky. And I got to interview him twice. I got to, I got to do a, a 10 minute video at, at planet uh, where we met. And then he came back on the show for like a, well, I got to sit down with him for like an hour and a half uh, and, and talk. Cause he was, he has, he has a new Marvel art book with like his art Marvel cover works and stuff that, that came out uh, via Kickstarter. And so he came on the show uh, to promote. And then, and then they talked about like, you know, him and Brian, Michael Bendis's backstory and all all that stuff. He is, he's, uh, he is a magnetic, uh, man. He's, he's so, he's so, he's so cool. And yeah, it's, I've, I've been a big fan of his for, yeah. Daredevil alias, uh, his, his, his indie stuff. Kabuki is excellent. Uh, I love I just love his artwork. I can, I can look at his art all day and he is the same amazing, like in person to chat with as he is like when you're looking at his art, when, you know, that, that level of like, of, of masterful and awesomeness is just reflected in his personality. He just loves comics and he he's very respectful and he's, you know, very like appreciative when he, you know, when he's like, he, he retweeted and shared our episode and not everybody does that, you know, which is cool. I get it. Uh, but you know, he was just like, emailed me a follow-up like oh that was fun thank you so much and and, and, you know just like very very cool to made when you go out of your way to make press you know feel special and appreciated i i notice it uh it's just it's very nice but yeah uh getting getting to talk to him a couple times was was just uh, amazing it's one of the one that's one of the cool things about what i do um you know, because I, I am, I, I do write, I am a writer and I, and I just, I just got into an anthology wrote my first short, short comic book that got funded on Kickstarter, uh, in the, uh, Cthulhu invades Neverland anthology. And, uh, and so like, you know, and, and other people now are asking me to be in other anthologies and I'm like, is this where this is going now? Right. Uh, and, and I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm going with it. I'm doing it right. 1% every day. Like we'll try, um, don't say no. And, um, but yeah, it's, uh, uh, to get to talk to these creators and meet, to meet these creators and learn, you know, I paid a lot of money for grad school. And one of the things about grad school is, is, you know, once or twice a year, they would pay a lot of money to get like a New York times bestseller or somebody to come uh, and do like guest lectures and, and guest workshops and stuff with the students. And I get to do that several times a week. Now I get to talk to writers and artists and I get to talk about their creator process and, you know, how these ideas came to be and, you know, how they, how they deal with burnout, how they, how they organize their time. Uh, you know, I, a lot of creators watch my show. So I try to, even when we get goofy and silly and talk about life, I do try and come back to those elements. Right. Um, I try and balance that out between like, what would general nerds want to hear about their favorite comic book series? What would other creators want to hear about creating these big series? Right. And, and then, you know, how can, how can we like get some, some good bits, uh, and, and little pieces of advice for general listeners. And, uh, on top of, you know, being weird and silly and saying too many four letter words. Right. But that's just, that's just kind of my deal. And, and yeah, David Mack was a, a perfect fit for that. He's been in the industry so long. He had so many stories. Uh, 
I always try and tell people, I'm like, I'm like, you know, I try to keep these to an hour. And then like, Dave, I think David Mack talked to me for like an hour and 45 minutes. Like I kept trying to wrap it up and he, he would tell another story. I was like, Hey David, you can talk, baby. Like I'm not, <laughs> I'm not going to turn your mic off. <laughs> I have guests like that. I got to say, Owen likes comics. One of the best international guests I've had in years. He, we went over an hour and 30 and I got to say when Dan Walsh visited one of my favorite comedians and friends from the role rules and the challenge, Definitely, when he came on the podcast, we went nearly an hour as well. So I love those types of conversations. Nice, nice. And oh, by the way, I've had some like dream guests from my favorite shows turn me down because of time length. Really? I gotta say, it's a God Talent winner, and I'll just say that. Was it? Because I, I mean, I know I a lot of your stuff. I mean, I, I it looks like a lot of your stuff. You try to keep it to about like twenty minutes or so, or you know, between like twenty and thirty or ish minutes, depending on the guests. But would or, or do do they want like even faster interviews, or do they want more time? Do are like I mean, like what do these do? These people just want to come on for like five or six minutes and and then bounce out. There's like what what can you do in five or six minutes? Not a lot. Yeah, not a lot. But like I got to say. Even one of my best guests of the year, Alex Michelson, a seven-time Emmy-winning journalist, gave me a half hour, which I'm grateful for. And I will nice. always be grateful for. That's cool. So, instead of like, so I got to say to that person that got talent winner and their PR people, please respect my sources and you know who I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah. Always, always respect press. Um, whether you're a, whether you're a, a big time, you know, famous actor, you know, host something or even like a new indie creator trying to reach out to podcasts and stuff to get on and promote your next Kickstarter book. Like treat people with respect. It goes along, goes a long way. And remember people get busy, right? Um, it, you know, even when, um, unfortunately, like I have to say, I have to say no a lot, or I have to say, you know, maybe we'll get you on the next Kickstarter campaign, especially now with the, the day job stuff with doing work for like Invader Comics and Metal Ninja Studios and I just took on a job for uh, uh, for Diebold Comics as their social media manager. They're doing some cool stuff. Um, you know, I just uh, I don't have as much time to do all the interviews anymore. And, and, you know, and now we're using my channel to do stuff for work as well. And so I just have to balance it out. And I know I know, you know, when people want to come on your show and you don't have time for them, I know it's not what they want to hear, but it's just people get busy uh things things happen and just always be always be respectful and and you know just like just like me there's been times where like people haven't responded to my emails and i've been like you know and i've i've wanted to say what i really you know like uh you know i bet if i had i bet if i had fifteen thousand followers you'd you'd respond to this email maybe right and but guess what i'm not gonna say that because it's not i you don't you don't burn bridges in this industry or some people do, but the, the smart ones don't burn bridges because things can always change. Absolutely. And what I always go for, if they want to have their artists be, if they're, every time I look at somebody, I have to look at their social numbers because the thing is, if they have less than 5,000 combined, mm -hmm. I mean, very, 5,000 is being very generous. Yeah. I, then I can't. We're going to have to wait until you get, until you get to that level for now. We got to pause them and go on. Yeah. Yeah. I just, I just had to do all that for me. I made it, I made my first media kit and had to like go through all the socials and count up all my followers and then do like the algorithm, the estimated, you know, reach throughout the different social medias and stuff. And it, you know, the numbers weren't what I wanted and they're getting a little better. It's the whole social media scope right now is weird. Twitter kind of happened naturally. I was just always good at it and I was good at connecting with people and I was funny. Right. And I would post good tweets and people, you know, I, I people engage with me a lot on Twitter. I don't have that same luck with like, uh, like Instagram is really hard for me. Like I'm trying to build up on Instagram. I'm trying to you know, face, there's still a lot of comic book people on Facebook. So like, you know, Facebook, I'm trying to get more people to like follow my Blake's buzz page and stuff on Facebook. People follow my reg like the, instead of following my Blake's buzz page, more people just send me friend requests and stuff on Facebook. It's I'm like, I'm like, look, that's great. Let's be friends, but follow the Blake's buzz page. Like, just please just go, go click the like button. So I'm like always trying to direct people, but yeah, Twitter, Twitter just happened. 
and and still happens i get i get a lot of i get you know a handful of followers every week and it, and it adds up i think a lot of them are bots and fake now but you know whatever uh but yeah it's uh and then like i'm on blue sky and a lot of comic book people are going over to blue sky but it's still it's still not populated like twitter is right now and so yeah just trying to navigate all these social spheres and then putting that all together and really like thinking about all the hard work you do and and adding numbers to that and then kind of being like man i wish those numbers were better but they're also not terrible right but it, you know it's just like that was a that was a trip putting that media kit because basically what a media kit is it has all your information on it a picture some of the things you're known for it has my my top guests like big guests i've had and basically when i send that to other press or pr people or creators themselves trying to get interviews i attach that little two-page pdf infographic thing and include that so that hopefully you know when i when i contact people that represent someone with a bigger name or you know contact them directly they can look and be like oh like the tens of thousands of people a month like okay maybe i you know maybe if i do this interview like a lot of people see it that'll equate to book sales right i can i guarantee that no does it look good it looks a little better uh, but yeah it's just like it's, i learned that from some other podcast friends and, and people that do that it's just you know a little extra effort to send out uh you know when when you do that and, and, and also it's, it kind of like is, is your branding, right? It's, it's your, a little bit more than, you know, the short email that we get to send requesting this guest. Right. And so that's like, hopefully they look at it. If they look at it. It's just, like I said, a few graphics, a few numbers, some pictures and branding, and then, and it makes you stick out a little more, but yeah, making it was just kind of depressing. Cause it was just like thinking about this world and everything you've built and all these audiences and then like turning it all into numbers and then, and, and like ve felt very like commercialized and dirty. And I was just like, I was like, I'm more than these numbers, but I guess for this, I am only these numbers. <laughs> it's, it's kind of funny. Which is great. And we'll talk. And I'm so glad we're having this conversation regarding, however, we got to get back to some greater guests yes, because yes. I'm like, the second guest I was very excited to talk with because it's Patrick Leeson, probably one of the hottest artists in, since his start in 2000 and mid 2000s. Think about it. this guy has drawn for both DC and Marvel, Aquaman, Batman and Robins Volume One and Two, Superman. The Green, he kicked off the Green Lantern Corps. He was in the founding illustrator for the Green Lantern Corps, and not to mention he re his recent one of Sp Amazing Spider Man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's he's incredibly talented. Um he was a cool interview because he was not super excited when I approached with my press badge and was like, Hey man, you want to do an interview? And he was like, he was like, oh, I'm kind of busy, man. And he's like, hey, come back, come back later. We'll see. And I was like, okay. I mean, I ended, I ended up buying an omnibus from him too and paid him a little money to like sketch in it. Right. So like I greased the wheels a little bit. Well, I, I greased the wheels, but I, I did that for me. Like I bought a Patrick Gleason remark and, a, and a, the Batman and Robin omnibus, which is one of my favorite comic books of all time i'm a huge damian wayne fan and uh patrick gleason uh is was the artist on that uh that that phenomenal run uh i'm i uh, the the writer is is escaping my mind i can't pete think tomasi? of it. pete tomasi thank you yeah and they've they've teamed up like you mentioned they've done uh super sons they've done superman the new green lantern omnibus their whole collection of green lantern is out now so they have like four omnibuses worth of content between between Gleason and, and the writer and so like and Tomasi and 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 it's all great like there are it, it all slaps no weak spots it's all phenomenal anyway I love Batman and Robin I love Damian Wayne so I like I'm just amped up meet, meeting Gleason and he's kind of get he's kind of getting that vibe and I'm like I'm like dude like you don't know what Batman and Robin like meant to me I freaking cried you know, when, when Damien died, spoiler, Damien died, but he comes back. This all happened years ago. So like, don't get mad at me. Uh, yeah, the, the guys, <laughs> alert, spoiler alert, sorry. Too late. <laughs> but uh, so he, when I started getting excited about his comic books, he was kind of like, he was like, okay. He was like, yeah, come back, come back. We'll do the, we'll do the, the, the quick 10 minute interview. And then, so I came back and, and set up the interview and uh, started talking to him and I got Patrick, pretty excited about it and got him kind of talking about being a father because his kids were there like kind of helping in the booth and i got him talking about being a father and and how uh, how that kind of played into how he made batman and robin 
And in those issues when Robin died and we see Bruce and the Bat family mourning and I, you know, I got, I got him talking about like as a father, what that meant and how like he it kind of was dark and heavy for him just thinking about like his own kids and what, you know, you, you try not to think, go, go to those dark spaces. Right. But he was like, you can't help it when you're, when you're, you're, you're in the, you're in the studio, like hunched over drawing all these images and stuff. And so, yeah, like he, after, after the interview, he was like, he was like, Blake, that was really cool, man. He, he was like, you, you really read my comics and know my work and we're excited about it. And he's like, I don't do a lot of these interviews. And, and that was, that was really special. And I'm really glad you came by my booth. And I was like, I was like, holy crap. I, mean, I was like, I was like, I, I was, I was about to thank you, Patrick. And, and you thanked me. And so, yeah, it was, uh, that was, that was, that was one of the cool short interviews I got, got to do at the con. Uh, he very, uh both just the circumstance of like seeing him be hesitant to say yes and then and then hit us both getting ex more and more excited during the interview and just wanting to talk to each other was was really cool and then yeah walked away with that batman and robin omnibus which i got for cheaper than cover price uh and and uh and he's sketch he drew damian wayne inside of it too so like i got a deal on that uh but I was the, even though that was the last day of the con carrying or like my backpack was already full. I got like recording equipment in there. I got my, you know, my wireless mics, everything. I got snacks. I got the water bottle. I got books and stuff I bought. <laughs> Adding an omnibus to that. I was so tired, Jacob. That's <laughs> that Sunday night. You know, my backpack was so, so heavy. I was just like, when I finally got home, like my shoulders hurt. And then, and then you're like exhausted from the con, but you're also still excited and, and like, you know, kind of buzzing about it. And so it's like your body wants to sleep, but your mind can't really sleep yet. And uh, I don't know, this is a, this is a very magical, a very magical experience. I got to meet tons of cool people and, you know, but that Planet Comic Con was my first convention ever that I've ever been to. And I was press. So like I got a press badge, all access, everything was paid for uh and and never been to a con before and i just like got thrown into the whirlwind of awesomeness and and i was just like that kind of hit me i was like i was like i want to do this all the time like i would love to travel like i know you've you told me like you've been to like new york a couple times and like you know i would dude i would oh i would love to to do that and and i've heard with the stuff i do now it it should be easy for me to get pro badges and and other press badges and get access to this stuff but it's just the I mean, you know, it's it's getting there, staying, you know, staying, finding somewhere to sleep for three days, uh, even if you're strong and don't spend a lot of money at the cons, which is impossible because you meet people like Patrick Gleason and then you want to take some of their art home with you. Right. And, and you're like, you don't even think about it. You just start counting out the 20s. <laughs> uh, oh, but, you know, believe me. Yeah. Believe me, you, that, <laughs> what happened to me at when I met Mr. Shatner, and Mr. Daniels. Nice. Them. And then not to mention the fact when I was at New York Comic Con last year, um, handing the money over, I, but it was a great experience to meet Tyler Hoshin. I was a huge oh, cool. Wolf fan before he was Superman, so I got some that. And then it was really cool to get Tom Kenny as well. And nice. then I got to say, I loved getting D. Bradley Baker's Olmec autograph. Yeah, yeah. And the child of the 90s, that was so cool. And I was like, God. yeah i remember you telling me you were because basically like right when we got to go into the con that was the first thing you did i think you went and got in the shatner line i, th I think that's what you did, said that was and, yeah that was thank god i did too because it was huge I, I remember seeing it later and i was i was like man it'd be cool to meet him and i like looked over there and i was like nope <laughs> i was like that's too much it was uh, like i say thank god for the all access batch i know right really yeah going back that would be my Hanukkah present for myself next year, especially with twenty thought the twenty fifth year. Yeah, it's good. I'm I'm excited. Uh, I think I think next year is going to be pretty pretty massive. Uh, I keep I keep trying to figure out if I want to do the because they're doing that anime con right. It's like the week of my birthday, and I'm been, I've been getting really into manga and stuff, but I still I'm still very new to the scene and don't know how. My enthusiasm is there, but my knowledge is press isn't there for that you know for for the anime convention and stuff so i don't know i i don't know but i kind of i kind of want to go and i kind of want to i don't know what i'm going to do 
I probably need to decide quickly though, because October's coming up. So they probably need to know if I want to go as press or <laughs> I should probably get on that. But anyway, long story short. But yeah, next year, Planet Comic Con 25th anniversary. I I think they're gonna blow it out of the water. I think it's gonna be amazing. There's gonna be some cool people there, and I'm I'm very, very excited to go back. Me too, me too. And I gotta say, trust your guts. Yes, what definitely. Else? All right. So one final guest I want to talk about because it's a big one. Parkour now, he is very instrumental in both the Doctor Who world. But I got to say, I loved his run in Action Comics when he put Lex Luthor front and center. But he also does Cat in Britain and MI-13, which was a wonderful mm-hmm. book. And then Demon Knights and then, of course, Wolverine. Yeah, he's uh, he's 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 big time, uh, and he he does a lot of cool indie stuff. He's got a cool book. The reason I interviewed him was because of his new title at Ahoy, um, where he basically it's an alternate, it's a retelling of a uh, of of comic book conventions from like when they started to now, and it like goes through the decades, uh, and so it's kind of like autobiographical, but also blending fiction, um, and some a lot of love of the industry blended with critiques of the industry and things that need to change very very smart very great um of a very great title that that's like worth your time anything paul writes is, is worth your time but yeah it's uh he got i jacob i get lucky a lot because uh there's the super fan promotions they get a lot of big time clients and they like me and they like my show and so a lot of my guests my big guests have been you know super fan reaching out to me saying like, Hey, do you want to interview Paul? And I'm like, yeah, let's set it up. Let's do it. Uh, and, and so getting involved with them was, was very helpful in my career. Uh, and, and it would get another weird deal of like, they liked my personality and, and they reached out to me and asked to, you know, for me to, if I wanted to be on their press list and, and interview considerations and stuff. Right. And I was like, I was like, yeah, like, duh, <laughs> like make my life easier, please. Um, but yeah, so because of them, uh, and, and Hannah is, is my contact with them typically. And Hannah, Hannah's amazing. Uh, but yeah, super fan promotions reached out to me. I got to interview Paul. Uh, we got to talk. We, we actually, we got to talk about, we, we kind of spun off and, and talked about life and talked about the writer strike and what's going on right now. And, and what Paul thought about that and just kind of how, how much of a bummer it is that like, there's so much money going around, but there's so much greed around it too. Right. It's just like these problems could be fixed in a moment and, and, and these, these stubborn rich, you know, whatever you want to call them, uh, they, they don't want to, they don't want to do it. And, you know, um, it, it so we, we kind of, you know, talked about that uh, a little bit and he talked about his, uh, his, his, which is a world war two book from TKO, which is really cool. But yeah, he was just, he was just so kind and, and fun and funny. Uh, and, and one of those people, like, like Jacob mentioned, like he's got this huge backlog of work and he's, he's worked on really big titles and he's been in the industry for so long. And he's still one of those guys. that's just like, dude, it's crazy. Like people want to talk to me and like my books, like I'm still not used to it, you know? And it's like, how are you not used to this Paul Cornell? Like you're, you're like, you wrote freaking Dr. Who, like you wrote Wolverine. You've been like on big, like every, like every big indie publisher you've been on both the big two um you know and and so yeah it's he's he's very he's very humble and and very very down to earth and and was was just like a just a joy to talk to and then you know and then we spun he kind of you know the conversation changed and he talked about how like one of his superpowers is being a good gift giver and apparently other people in his family don't have that ability uh he t- and he told this really funny story about his brother giving him this like wooden box and he he like opened it up on christmas and thought like there was something in the box and he was just like nope this dude just gave me like a wooden box it wasn't wrapped or anything it was empty it was just like thought i'd like it i guess <laughs> um but yeah so yeah he was a he was a great he was a great interview and um I, I, like i said i'm just i'm very very lucky that you know I, do, I have to hustle sometimes right i do i do my begging right I, you know and like i and like i said i'll buy books sometimes and grease the wheels and be like, oh, I just bought bought all these books from this new creator. Really stoked to read them, and then later reach out, be like, hey, like been reading your books. Maybe you want to do an interview sometime. And that that does that often works, by the way, for like you know sometimes uh, a bit higher, not the highest profile guests, because like some of those guys, 
when they when you get to a certain element of your career they don't have to do interviews anymore or when they do interview like like tom taylor i would love to interview tom taylor tom taylor does today's shows as a comic guy right he, he doesn't talk to podcasters i even know friends of tom taylor that are in like the same writing group and they like read each other's scripts and stuff and i you know and uh i've like tried to be like hey like put in a good word for me and they're like blake i love you but he doesn't do podcasts like and i was just like ah you know um so basically like anyways you gotta gotta experiment with different things and uh, like absolutely. i said yeah absolutely i feel the same way about scott snyder and jeff jones yeah right yeah uh this is a funny story scott snyder follows me on twitter has dm'd me review copies before um you know retweets my reviews for like because he just did the distillery uh uh anthology the, the devil's cut and uh i got on the distillery press list one of, one of the few journalists to get on distillery's press list i got a review copy early and stuff pretty big achievement for me i was pretty stoked for it um but yeah anyways scott snyder has uh, every now and then he'll 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 dm me something right and i always do it and he always i'm always like oh yeah thanks scott i'm totally gonna look at this da, da, da. by the way you ever want to do an interview and then it's like he's gone <laughs> it just vanishes into the wind but i i get it he's he's the same way he's he's a he's got a million kids now i think i don't know he's four boys or something four three or four boys uh so he's got crazy chaotic family life crazy chaotic comic life i think he's got a couple things in production in hollywood that well that might all be froze up right now but you know anyways the guy's crazy busy so like i said earlier don't burn bridges don't get discouraged but continue to shoot your shot right if scott snyder dms you throw it out there would still love to interview you man if he doesn't say anything don't take offense to it don't get don't get sad or discouraged these people are crazy crazy busy and one day you may luck out right one day scott might be like you know this guy he writes a good review and he's asked me about five freaking times if i want to be on his show man you know what i'll do his show i'll give him an hour you know so just like always shoot your shot but always believe in yourself but you know, remember we're all people and we're not perfect. And we, and, and a lot of these people are, are crazy busy. And like I said, have four sons, a wife and other family too. Right. So it's just like, anyways, long story short, don't get, people are going to tell you no, or not say anything at all. When you try and set up interviews, that's the name of the game. Don't, don't put it on yourself. Don't think it's like, because your numbers suck or because you suck or you're not a good interviewer. It, they, people just get busy and have limited time and and when sometimes when you get to that point of your career they don't have to do this anymore and you know if it's, it's like doing your own laundry if 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 you didn't have to do your own laundry anymore and you could pay someone to do it you you aren't really going to miss doing your laundry you know and, and and a lot of these creators when they came up in the indie scene and and had to do interview after interview after interview after interview and and talk to anybody or anything to get the word out for their book right and they they hustled like that and when it finally pays off and they don't have to do that or they can be very limited in who they talk to and only do like the shows and stuff that they like or that that do well or have the good numbers i mean i would do it too you know it's it's it makes sense and and i get it so again like uh, people that are thinking about doing what jacob and i do just remember that you're going to get, you're going to get told no a lot, or you're going to get told nothing, right? They're just, you're just not going to respond to your email. And that may be like the creator or the person you want to interview or their PR people. Sometimes they just won't say anything. It's not you. It's not your fault. It doesn't mean you're bad at this. It's just the name of the game and you, you move on and you interview someone else. And and then a, few, a couple months go by, a few months go by, you try again. That's what I, ju I, I always get nervous on when to follow up because I don't want to be annoying, but I also want to interview some of my heroes, right? And so I always get really nervous about following up or asking again, even when people tell me to ask again later on down the road, I'm just like, I'm like, I don't want to be annoying. Like, you know, like no one's going to want to talk to the annoying guy, uh, but you know, just that's just, that's just my that's just my advice um oh believe me believe me I, you've hit the nail right on the head so final questions are you ready all right i'm ready let's go 
Where can my audience find Blake Buzz and where can they connect with you on social media? I am. It's, it's very easy. I uh, making my Blake's Buzz title was very uh, is the only th is the only Blake's Buzz out there. If you Google Blake's Buzz, everything pops up. I'm on uh, I'm on Twitter X, whatever you want to call it. That's the that's the main platform still. So Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, uh, Blue Sky Threads. Find me at Blake's Buzz. Pull it up. Uh, YouTube at Blake's Buzz. TikTok. I need to get better about posting shorts. I've been slacking, but TikTok and YouTube. I'm I'm, I'm at Blake's Buzz. YouTube. I go live several times a week. I do live streams uh, typically uh, with creators. Uh, you know, people come in the chat and talk, and we, we you know we have a good time. So I do that. I do that several times a week usually. Um, and well, I do that, but then I do it too much, and then I take a couple of days off. But ba I mean, basically, like you can find a live stream on my channel one or two or more nights a week uh, with creators, with new books out. Um, I, I kind of want to start doing more stuff with other podcasters. I kind of want to get like a, a podcast council going uh, just because I think it would be cool to nerd out with other people, but have like the first part of the chat where we offer advice and talk. I mean, e even like talk about like the equipment we use, what recording suites we use and things like that. Uh, it just, Stuff that like I wish I had easier access to when I started all this because I do when I started all this, I was like, how, like, I'm googling like how to edit audio, like how to use Audacity, like how, why, why is my I spent hours one time trying to figure out why I have a very expensive microphone. I bought, I this was my first big podcast purchase, so I was like investing in myself, right? So I got this nice mic this nice uh, good audio equipment and i kept getting uh feedback like real minor like uh buzzing noises and stuff and like i re-ran all my wires made sure things weren't next to each other you know like tried to do all, all, a lot of people were like reaching out and giving me feedback and like you know giving me ideas on how to fix it nothing worked nothing worked nothing worked it's my cell phone jacob my cell phone sitting next to the microphone when it got a signal or a text message or something, it would it would give feedback to the microphone. And so I'll I, after hours of rewiring things and, and reorganizing it, all I did I just have to put my cell phone away from my desk, and the audio is perfect now. But it, you know, just you know, stuff like that. Like tell these stories, new podcasters, new streamers, and stuff. Like they can watch us talk for the first you know half hour or whatever, learn some stuff. And then the last half hour is just kind of like uh, the drink and chat or whatever. You know, we talk about like what we're reading or what, like one of us watched a new movie or a new anime. Anyway, that's been something I have been kind of trying to work on, but it's hard. Uh, you you do, scheduling interviews with creators, ladies and gentlemen, is hard. Scheduling interviews with other content creators is even harder because they're just always, always, always busy. And when they get that, one night or two nights a week off guess what they don't always want to do another live stream <laughs> so that's that's been something i've been kind of playing with and like i said people seem interested in it but when when everybody's busy you know it, and it does it it, it 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 takes a different kind of level of energy out of you to when you're when you get hyped up on a mic and when you get excited and and when you're when you're on it for like an hour or more, hour and a half, two hours even, right? When you're when you're always on it, no dead air. Dead air's the enemy, right? We got to be like ready to jump at any point. And even though like I love what I do, when the mic goes hot, I have a blast. It's weird, like after the chat, and then you know, and then I shut down the live stream and say goodbye to the guests. Sometimes we'll talk a couple minutes after, and it, you know, everybody leaves, and I just kind of sit here in the chair, and it's just like, like man, I feel like I, I feel like I ran around the block or something, right? It's, it's like it's. And I don't think people realize that uh, how like I don't want to call it emotionally taxing because it's not it's not a big tax, but it, it like it just it, it it consumes a bit of energy. And and when you do lots of shows every week, it just it it does it does weigh on you by the time like Friday, because I try really hard not to do shows on Saturday or Sunday. I, I that's you try, I try to have that be my day, even if I'm prepping for other shows that week. But that's still like that's my time um well it was my time and, and it's my social media like i work then too but i try not to do interviews then just to kind of like make sure i have a break but yeah it's uh it's it's weird and, and a lot of people don't know that so 
again, remember if, 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 if you're reaching out to people, you know, like people get tired and, you know, sometimes won't respond to an email as fast as you want, might be too busy, might just need a break for their mental health. You know, it's, it's life. People tell us no, sometimes there's no need to get mad or hateful or, uh, or write someone a bad review. I had a, I had a creator get really mad at me when I told him I couldn't do an interview one time and they were, they were like, well, this other podcast referred to you. And I was like, that's great. I know them. And that's really cool. But I was like, just right now my schedule, I just can't, I just can't fit you in and I'm sorry. And they're like, well, I'll let, I'm going to tell them this. And, and I was just like, please. I was like, yeah, tell them. I was like, I'm, I'm going to tell them too. I'm going to reach out and be like, who is this person you sent my way with, with the fiery guilt trips? But anyway, I didn't even ever end up saying anything about it and it died out. But yeah, it's just, don't be like that. Uh, just, just be like, maybe next time. Okay. Like, absolutely. So. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. So guys, if you missed an episode of the Jake's Take with Jacob Elias Show podcast, visit our Apple podcast. These are Google Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Podcast Addict, Spotify, and Spreaker pages. Jake's Take with Jacob Elias Show. J-A-C-O-B-E-L-Y-A-C-H-A-R. Now, are you on social media? Because I'm on social media too. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. And threads as well. So Jacob Elias J-A-C-O-B-E-L-Y-A-C-H-A-R. And remember, you can catch my take on what's going on with America's Got Talent then my upcoming season of The Max Singer, and also my favorite comics and everything on jakesandshake.com. Blake, thank you so much for buzzing by the Jake's Take with Jacob Aishar podcast. I really appreciate it. Dude, I like it was an honor. Like, thank you so much. I, I, like for real, this is like the first time I've I've been interviewed as a as like a content creator and a, a like a you know, someone thought I was interesting. So like I will I will remember this for the rest of my days sir. Uh, and I'm so glad I got to meet you at the con and I'm so glad we stayed in touch and, and, and continue to, you know, follow each other and, and get to know each other. Everybody, Jacob is amazing and you should follow him on everything. And you should listen to all his podcasts and all his YouTube channels. And you should, you should share, like, and subscribe and you should support him. Cause he's just, he's so, he's so excited about media and, and he's easy to talk to. And he, he, like I mentioned earlier, he puts those good vibes into the world and that's what, we need right now that's that's not all heroes wear capes some of them just put good vibes out there and jacob does that all the time he's very supportive he's very kind he's a very cool dude and you should all go follow him and support his content as that's just my thoughts that's just my thoughts thank you so much for the closing comments that made a lot that meant a lot to me blake so i really appreciate it guys thank you so much for taking time in your schedule to watching this thank you so much for listening until next time have a great one everybody goodbye